Salam everyone. In today's lecture, uh, we are going to talk about one of the registers that resides in the CPU. So if you can remember uh, in the previous lecture, uh, we have learned about five types of registers which is inside your CPU. And uh, let's go back to the slides last time. So if you go back to this particular uh, slides, this is the one that uh, we have the components inside the CPU where you have the uh, status register over here you have the program counter you have the stack pointer and then you have the address register and the easiest one you learn about the data register so this is all five five types of uh, registers which is inside your CPU so the data register is very easy you know that this is the place where you, you can uh, store the data over here which is 32 bit in size and then the second one is the address register this is also 32 bit in size but you can only use up to 24 due to the lines over here is allowed up to 24 pins only and this is where you are uh, reserving the address of the memory location outside there so it means that if you put a value over here that is actually uh, relates to the address outside to the memory which is the address over here so what is the number here is belong to this one and then uh, the step pointer this is going to be one chapter this is going to be a very tough one and you have the problem counter which is the address is going to be executed which is contains the address of the next instructions to fetch and execute I'm going to touch this one today a bit because this is going to be finished quite soon. And for today's lecture, we are going to concentrate on the status register, which is uh, 15 bit in size. So the function is uh, to contain information on the results of the last instruction, consists of the system byte and condition codes register, which is a CCR, they call it, okay? They call it code, condition code registers. The size is only 16 bit. Okay. So this is the uh, <coughs> the the status register. So um you are going to learn about this part only. This one you are not going to touch it. So I don't want to uh, confuse everybody. So we're going to concentrate this place only and there are going to be a five bit of five sections that you need to understand okay so before that before we extend uh we proceed with the lectures let's go back to your easy cca k so where is the uh ccr uh status register located so you can go to your easy 68k so you can see here this is your address register sorry this is data register this is your address register this is your stack pointer this is your program counter and this is where your status register so remember that i don't want to teach everything i'm going to teach only five bits only which is belong to this one zero one two three four okay the rest i don't care so remember that this status register is represented in binary numbers that's why it has 16 bit 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 uh, four, sorry 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so it's 16 bit so this is represented by binary numbers which is only 1 and 0 where the rest of the registers represented over here is in hexa numbers. So remember that this is not going to be a hexa number. Okay, let's look at the definitions of it. So this status register is something to give a sign. Okay, means that you were going to give a flag. Flag means normally flag, 
okay let's put a flag this is a flag right you are flagging means you are flagging if you put a flag means that you are telling the system something had happened something like that something had happened right so the value over here the value over here for the extent negative zero and overflow carry can be only one or zero okay zero or one can be only that two numbers so this is the status that you are going to check when you want to do your programming for example that you want to check if there's the uh, uh the, the continuity of the uh operations of automatic completed then you have to check part of this then you can move to somewhere else so this is where the status register uh going to give you information automatically when any code is executed especially on the aromatic parts this is very important so let's define it one by one so we have five of them we have x we have n we have z we have v and we have c so all of them quite um you can see that this is carry the uh, uh having the first first uh, letter over here like c for carry z for zero n for negative x because of we have the, 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 the names over here is extend, right? So there will be no E here, just put that whole extend. And the overflow is uh, using V because the second one is V. So this is going to be overflow. So let's look one by one on the status register bit for carry here. So what is the definition of it? So the definition says that it was set. Set means one. Okay if a carry occurs during addition operation or shift operation or set okay, this is one eh? set means it will set one here you will go to one here okay if borrows occurs during subtraction so it means that there are two conditions here if uh, there's a carry occurs or there's a borrow occurs so you should remember that when you do the uh, uh, process of adding and process of a subtraction you may have an extra numbers going up and you may need to borrow uh, uh, numbers from the other side to make it a subtraction because there may be a smaller number minus a big number okay something like that so that then you will see that clear otherwise so what does it mean of clear otherwise this one clear otherwise means it will be zero clear means zero one is set clear is zero so it can be one or zero so the rest of this operation uh, sorry the rest of this one and uh, this this bit carry the carry bit will set if this is the prop uh, this particular uh, uh, situation happens and it will be zero if this is not happening so let's look at the example first for the carry okay let's try to look at a number uh, let's put away like this i want to give a very um, simple number just put a number a a in 16 is equivalent to 1010 in base is equivalent to 10 this 10 is which a decimal number so uh let's try to put uh this number okay a plus a is equivalent to one zero one zero plus one zero one zero so then you can add directly zero plus zero is equivalent to zero this is binary numbers eh? so one plus one is zero and you have the extra going here one plus zero plus zero is zero this one and then you have this one one plus one is zero and then you have the carry out which is this one will be here so let's try to have the uh, numbers being validated by your calculator so go to mode base for binary numbers so 1010 one, zero, one, plus 1010 zero, one, zero. then the number sorry this is going to be yeah this is one sorry just know there's a carry over here okay 
then you have this number 10100 this is space 2 so you can see here you have a carry so let's look at the results from your uh, EZCC8K let's try to write a code okay look let's look at the example here for move.a uh, sorry move.byte 0a to d0 move.byte 0, 0, 0a to d1 for this uh, particular, ex uh, particular example uh, we are going to look at the value 0a this is going to be uh, 0a here 0a in 16 it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Now plus the same number, 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is going to be 0, 1. Sorry, this is going to be 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So there is no carry out from this number. So let's look at the example in your easy 68 k Right? So one by one. So a plus zero a plus zero a for byte size at a byte and reserve uh back to d zero. You can look at the results here and there is should be no changes on the carry because there's no carry happens. So there's nothing here. So let's put another example with uh, a plus a. A a plus a a. So A A plus A A. This one zero one zero one zero one zero plus one zero one zero one zero one zero. This is going to be zero. This is going to be zero one. This is going to be um zero one zero one. This is going to be carry up over here one. It should be have a carry so let's try to look at the changes in the register try again with the new value here aa to d0 aa to d1 and then we're going to add this number close everything first now run this one okay aa d0 aa d1 and we are going to look at this value C here. Okay. Now look at the results. Yes, you have the C is going to be 1 here. Don't look at the rest. We are not going to touch yet on the rest. So this is the first example for carry. So let's look at the subtraction. What happened if a big number uh, or a small number being deducted to a big number? So let's try to look at the uh, AZCC8K again. So we are going to have a small number, big number. So this is going to be like this. So D0, D1, D0 minus 0. There will be nothing because uh, a big number minus 0 number. This is going to be, there's no borrow happen. So we're going to change this value D0 to D1. <coughs> And then we're going to execute this. So again, we are doing it one by one. Let's, let's look at the results here for C carry. Is there any borrow happen? At D0, D1 minus D0, D1 minus D0. Oh, this is add, sorry, I have not yet subtracted it. So sub.byte. Let's run it. Then you have your value here. You already have this one just now. So this is a carry means it's subtracted and need to borrow. So if these two things, uh, this situation happens, means that it's a carry. And uh, if the things is need to borrow, then it's going to have a set to one over here, which is uh, going to be a number one here. Okay, so that's for very simple for carry uh, flag. Let's look at the second one. The second one is they call it extend extend is more one of the most simplest one this is going to copy the carry bit 
okay this is going to copy the carry bit copy the carry bit for aromatic operations so aromatic operations so let's go back to the um example again here on your easy 68k so let's look at the result here so you're expecting a subtraction a small number uh, minus a big number so it's going to have a carry because it's going to borrow and let's look at the results here and i'm going to do it the last one you have the carry here and the extend is copied the same value as carry so let's go for the add operation again just now for the first one add this one aa so doesn't matter this one the same number there must be a carry happens so let's look at the extend here not yet carry is not yet so this is the last one so you can see now the extend is copied the carry so the carry happens then the extent will copy, will copy the values so that's the second flag which is very simple okay the third flag okay the third flag so what we are going to learn about the third flag is the zero flag so this is the third one i'm going to teach this one the zero flag it will set to one if the results of operation is zero clear otherwise zero if anything is not made uh, it's not it's not having the result of operation zero so it means that very simple if one minus one is equivalent to zero zero happens then the flag will be one okay if two minus one is equivalent to one this is not zero then the flag will be zero so it's very simple let's look at the easy cc8k again so you can see for this example so I'm going to minus out these two numbers. It's going to make it a zero, right? So this is going to be sub number, subtract these values. So AA minus AA is going to be zero. So let's look at the result one by one. So not yet here. Zero is still zero here. I have not yet uh, executed this line. So let's run this line. Now you can see that the zero flag is equivalent to one. Because after you do the operation, you have the result is equivalent to zero means now AA minus AA AA minus AA is equivalent to zero so you have zero your Z flag will be one okay let's move on do another example if there's uh, not going to be a zero here so now I'm going to have the, this value so let's do BB here. So big number minus a small number, but there's no zero happen. Let's look at the Z flag. One by one. Z flag still zero. This is not yet executed. So let's look at the last line. So Z zero. Z still equal to zero because, because BB minus AA is not equivalent to zero zero it's not equal something that will be number over here okay maybe 11 i think if i'm not mistaken all right so that's for the case of zero so this is quite simple this is quite simple and this is, is also quite simple okay the next one is negative negative okay this is new. you need to understand the uh, definitions of it Okay, set one, eh? the result of the operation. Set the results of operation is negative where you are saying the, uh, the value is negative when you see the MSB is equivalent to 1. Or clear otherwise when you see the MSB is equivalent to 0. <coughs> so, in this example, eh, in this example, um, even though the value here, I mean, sorry, the value of a, 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 right? A is not a negative number in any case. A is one, zero, one, zero. This is not 
a negative number if you are not using a sign number. So this is a positive number. But if you look at the MSB is equivalent to 1, then the system, the CPU will, will um, use uh, this one as regard as a negative sign because the MSB is 1. So that's why your flag for the negative will be based on the result for your MSB. Okay. Uh, let's try to have the result again uh, for the AA plus AA again. Now AA plus AA, then you have the value of uh, for the binary number. 1010 okay plus 1010 uh, okay so you want to see the results here is it um, msb1 or not okay let's look at the result here 0 this is 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 this is scary so the result here is a MSB zero. So this one should be a, 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 a positive sign. This is your MSB. This is carried out. So let's look at the result. So we are going to uh, look at this as your uh, negative flag will be zero. AA plus AA, it should be zero. Mm. Okay. So AA plus AA your negative should be zero. So one by one. So now look at the negative. This is not yet, and this is not yet. This is what happened is every time you do the execution, the status register will be updated. So this is the operations that we are going to look at, not this one. I'm, I'm going to teach I'm going to tell you why this is going to be negative here so this is the add dot byte just now this is going to be expecting zero after this yes your negative now is going to be zero so what why just now we have the negative is one so let's look at the uh, code again so this code is uh, putting the value to d0 this code is putting the value to d1 so this value is this value just now one zero one zero one zero one zero this is the value for the msb here you can see that the msb is one so this value is put to d0 or d1 so once after that particular execution your status register is updated so that is why because of this value then you have your status register is changed to one just now okay look at one again Okay, now this command go to D0. So it means that you are putting this value to D0. So your N should be 1. Is it correct or not? Yes. The second command is the same one. So the N is could, could be, should be 1 because the rest Y0, Z is 0 because uh, the, the, the content here is not 0. So it's, the content is AA. Okay, now the operation is going to be uh, back to 0 just on the MSB. So the MSB is zero here. Okay. So let's look at the result. Yes, that is going to be the last results. Okay, so that is for the sign. So let's try for another number. Maybe it's going to have a one at the MSB. So let's try to have a value of what? For example, here this is going to be AA. So this is going to be zero. For example. Okay, so what is this number? This is uh, 2A and this is AA. Okay, so this is going to be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1. So this is your MSB is going to equal to 1. So your N flag should be 1 also. Okay, so AA plus 2A. Let's change this value over here. Okay, let's look at the results. Okay, here D0, then to A, then D0, D1, then you look at the result and negative here. This one should be 1. 
it is up there then you have the value for negative flag is 1 because of the MSP result is equivalent to 1 even though the name is negative doesn't mean that it's negative but it's just uh, pointing to the MSB is what is the equivalence of the results okay so let's move on for the final one so you know about the carry then you have known about the extent then you go for zero then you go for negative so let's look at the overflow okay so overflow is a bit different so what does it mean here in overflow it will set to 1 if an addition of two numbers with similar sign so you go back to the sign just now the sign means the sign the MSB sign all subtractions of the two numbers with different sign change the destination sign okay so means that you have a sign number 1 1 then the result maybe 0 so this is a sign positive positive then uh, sorry this is negative negative the result now is going to be zero so this is going to be a positive so the sign is changing okay the sign is changing they said it's like set one if an addition of two numbers with similar sign okay or subtractions of two numbers with different sign different signs mean one zero minus this one and the result will be different change the destination sign okay to make it easier you have to understand the concept of this table so let's look at the table here this is the effects of additional for the overflow b okay when you have the source and destinations and you got the answer here and then you can know that what is your status for the overflow flag for example here you have the source is positive as zero the, for the sign negative is one and then the result is going to be zero or one your v flag is going to be changed to zero so for the add here this is one okay positive and then your destination is also positive then you get the result negative sorry this is zero then you have the result negative and your overflow V will be going to be 1. If you have the result is going to be 0, your V is going to be 0. Okay, so that is for the uh, table, how you want to understand this table. For the add, this is a table and the, for the subtraction, you should look at this table. So it's different table. Okay, so the table is uh, you can refer the tables when you want to do the comparison so I have no problems with that so you just compare this one look at the results here for example you have this one zero zero you minus the result will be one or zero then your overflow V will be here zero for the uh, V is equal to one then you have the value of one zero your result is zero then you have the uh, your overflow flag is going to be one Okay, uh, let's look at the example for the subtraction here for AA to D0. This is the one we are having this one. So, um, this is going to be your, um, this is going to be your destination. This is going to be your destination. This is uh, 2A. This is AA. So, the destination is going to be this one. This is your source. Okay. So the result is like this and you have to look at the um, table just now so which uh which column that which rows that you need to look at look back over here the 2a the 2a is a destination destination is going to be a positive source will be negative result is negative so destination is positive so go to here the destination must be a positive and the source is negative the result just now is a negative number so you can see that this is the column or the row that you are going to look at then the result is the negative number so that's why your v is equal to one okay 
So you have to really careful look at which one is destination and which one is the source that you're going to subtract. Then you can look at this particular table and try to get the value for the V, uh, v for the status register on the V flag. Okay, you can play around with the example. I think uh, you just can look at the easy 68 k play with the number and you can validate for this uh, based on the calculator. Okay, so for the case of uh, five flag, you just need to remember that these are the flags that we need to learn. Okay, so we have the carry, we have the extend, then we have the zero, we have the negative, and we have the last one which is the overflow the one that is potentially having a problem to understand but uh, again this overflow you must refer to the table for the subtraction and the addition because they have different uh, conditions for it to be uh, set or cleared okay so that is for the status register for the complete set so the rest of the example you can look at the book and try to answer most of the examples and the exercise so uh, we're going to continue for the last register which is the point counter so the point counter is here again okay point counter is this one what does it mean a point counter contains the address of the next instructions to fetch and execute so this is uh, quite easy and uh, to show you guys and this is very important for the system to go where it wants to go and it is done automatically you do not need to take care of it as long as your software or your code is correct then the system can execute it one by one correctly so let's check how it works here for example here you have your code here okay this is your code so your code start as that origin 1000 means that you have the memory located here okay again when you declare it at 1000 so what happened is you have your memory outside there right starting from dollar sign zero 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 and the last one is going to be f f f f f f f in this command you put your origin 1000 means that you are going to put your code your code at that 1000 when you generate when you compile this one to machine code right so the code will be moved to the locations at 1000 so that's why when you run this one okay you can see the list file over here at the location 1000 here this is your machine code the command here is this your machine code here this is the machine code so you go to the memory at 1000 you can see that 103c 00AA A. okay so this is the common this is code over here means that you are putting your code to the address 1000 where you want to code so what is the prone counter do you can see now your prone counter is putting at 1000 location so the definition definition just now is saying that it contains the address of the next instruction to fetch and execute so it's going to fetch and execute the code at this location so that's why it's pointing to this location and want to execute this one i have not yet touched this one because i have not yet executed this one so if i execute this line it will move to 1004 so you have to look here too it's going to move point to the particular locations now you can see that 1004 is pointing to this one okay you can see that this is the one and then 
after finish this line is going to point to this location again it's 11008 so this is done automatically by the system so if you have a long lines of code every time when you run the code this is where your uh, execution will go it will point to the locations that it wants to execute by the program counter program counter is very important because you will tell where is the memory locations that you need to execute the system need to execute the lines so that's the case so it means that um, if you want to use this one at maybe 2000 3000 it's up to you for the simulation we're going to use only 1000 here to uh, i don't want to make you guys confused on that so that is the function of the program counter so back to the thing here It's very simple here now. You can see that this is your data register. You have the address register here. Today we learned about this status register. And finally, for the end of the lecture, we are learning about the program counter. So that's the function of all of these registers now. I'm going I'm going to talk about this one for one chapter. Okay, so this is the four registers that you should know already how it works. Okay, that's all for the lecture. Try, try to do your quiz and good luck to you guys. Thank you very much.